Hi, hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial video on touch buttons in Unity. Uh, when we last left off, we had this block of code, which first checked to see uh, if this object had a GUI texture, and if this GUI texture was hit by our touch position. Um, so I wanted to add a little bit of functionality to that, a little bit more. Uh, so what I did is I also added in uh, checks to see if the touch began, ended, moved anywhere else on the screen. So it's just the exact same as this block of code, just outside of our um, hit test. So yeah, this that's useful to have if to know when something was stopped being touched outside of the screen. Um, another thing that I added, well, I also shortened the name to Touch Logic instead of Touch Button Logic uh, because I like shorter names. Uh, another thing that I added was a public static variable called uh, current touch or cur touch, and you can see down here when we're iterating through all of our touches on the screen, I'm also setting the current touch equal to i, which is our current touch. Um, so what the public static variable is is a global variable. So you know if if you just have a public variable you could change it in the inspector. So like if I had this script on many objects, I could change the current touch integer to be different numbers on every single object. But I don't want that to happen. I want it to stay static. Um, so yeah, when the current touch is changed in one of the scripts, it is changed for all of the scripts. Yeah, so that's it for all the new stuff that I added. Um, however, one user on YouTube, Tato3123, asked if it was possible to get our hit test to work with a collider instead of a GUI texture. Um, and it is. So we can have we can have this same functionality for 3D objects with colliders instead of just GUI textures. And we're going to add in a little bit of functionality for that right now. Um, so this will be oh, this is for 3D objects with colliders. And let's do a touch began, and instead of calling it on touch began anywhere, we'll call it on touch began 3D, uh, just so we know that it's beginning on a 3D object. Uh, so, one thing that's different about GUI textures versus um, colliders is we need to check if the collider was hit with a ray. So, we're going to make a private. I have the variable of type ray, and we'll call it ray. Um, so this this will be the ray that we cast from our finger or from our touch um, into the scene. So, yeah, we're gonna touch the screen and then we're going to shoot a ray from that finger straight into the scene. And we also need to find what object was hit by that ray. So to do that we're going to need a variable ray cast hit, and we'll call this um, ray hit in info. Uh, and it's going to equal a new ray cast hit. What a ray cast hit does it is it will return the information that it will return the information from the object that was hit. Return the info of the object that was hit by the ray. Alright, so now that we have those two variables set up, we're ready to put them to work. So first we're going to check to see if the current touch began, um, and then we're also, so if the touch began, we're going to start the raycast, and we're going to set the raycast equal to the camera, the main camera, um, screen, so we need to find the, 
position of our touch on the camera's screen. So we're going to say uh, screen point to ray, and then we're just going to grab our um, our touch, our current touch dot position, and I need one more of those. Oops. Do I not need that? Yeah. So this is going to find our position of our current touch, and it's going to create a ray from that screen point. Uh, create creates ray from screen point position. Um. Yeah, so then before that happens, we need to check. Let's drag this in there. Oops. Okay, I guess I can't do that. Let's put that in there. So we need to check if our ray hit something. So we're going to do physics, physics dot ray cast. We're going to do the ray cast, and we're going to check if our ray hit something. Um, yeah, so we need to check if it hit something, which is going to be the info that this thing outputs. Yeah, so remember, this will return, it will output all the information of the object that was hit. So we're going to say, if the ray hit that object, then we're going to tell that object to run this function. Uh, actually, we don't want to use this for this. <laughs> Instead, what we want to do is we want to say the object that you hit send that message to it. Um, so we're going to kind of have to climb up the ladder from the information that is returned by the ray hit info. We're going to find the transformation, and then we're going to find the game object that that transformation is attached to. And then we're going to send this message to that game object. Uh, and that's all you need. Uh, so just real quick, I'm going to show that uh, that this works. Um, so we're just going to change the color of the main camera just to prove that it works. Equals color dot green, gray. Yeah, try it. Gray. So this will be test to show it works, and let's go ahead and drag our touch logic onto our cube, and give it a test. Alright, so if I touch the cube, it turns our scene gray. Perfect. So it works. Um, and that, actually, the way that we wrote this is very specific. It's casting a ray from our main camera. It's We're not using this anywhere. So it's specifically going to our main camera and casting a ray and finding the object that we hit with that, with that ray. So what we can do, like, we don't have to have that on our cube, we can have this anywhere. So like we could even have it on our directional light. So we could have it on our directional light or our main camera or any object in the scene because it is specifically saying the camera and the object that was hit. So you can see that even though it's the script is not on the cube anymore, if I touch the cube, it turns the screen gray. Yeah, so um, yeah, you don't want that in your final script. Instead, what you want to do is have a script on the cube with that function name on it. Uh, so that's it. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful. And tune in next time uh, for my next video. I'm going to do a two-finger uh, pinch zoom functionality, and we're going to utilize our public static integer current touch for that. So yeah, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.